Well, hello there, Fred Heads. It's Dylan's new nightmare day, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I'm very excited to have you all here today. As you know, Dylan's new nightmare, the fan film sequel to Wes Craven's new nightmare, which is my favorite movie of all time, just came out today. It stars Miko Hughes back as Dylan Porter, and it is made by the Horror Show Channel in collaboration with Womp Stomp Films, who of course made all of the terrific Never Hike Alone films, and they're coming out with Never Hike Alone 2 in the near future on October 13th. But welcome, Taff. Welcome, Stephen, Michelle, Emmy. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you to everybody else who is here joining for Dylan's New Nightmare. Did anybody already watch it this morning? Was anybody on there watching the live broadcast? I was sitting down this morning watching it. Of course, it was not the first time that I had seen it. I first watched it when Cecil of the Horror Show, who is also the director and writer of Dylan's New Nightmare, gave me an advanced preview before the final cut and then uh before final sound editing and everything like that and then i got to see it at the first public advance screening at mad monster party in arizona hi brandon gustavo danny dread nice to see you guys thanks so much for coming by uh I am super, super excited to watch this with all of you guys. And uh, speaking of Mad Monster Party, if you're looking for something extra to watch, Jason and I did create this behind the scenes of that advanced screening. It is available on our YouTube channel. We'll leave a link for you in the video as well as in the description below so that you can kind of get a feel for the excitement of that day for everybody who loves fan films and is uh, part of Dylan's New Nightmare and just kind of get some of their perspective right before that huge moment. Because if you guys have ever shown a film to the public, you know that it is nerve wracking, it is exciting, and you never know what people are going to say. And you can't please everybody, but you also can please a lot of people. And tons and tons of people were very, very excited. A lot of positive responses this morning. I uh, can't wait to watch it with all of you guys because I have spoken with Cecil. I've been in the Q&A panels and I know a little bit of extra stuff. And super huge Fred head here. Of course, this is the same model of Rex as the one that is the legitimate Rex from Wes Craven's New Nightmare, which Miko still owns. And uh, he and I are ready. Right, Rex? Yes. Yes, you want to watch Dylan's New Nightmare? Well, I guess, guys, we've just got to start it. All right. So without further ado, oh, holy crap, Dave McRae is on here. I just want to say horror show Cecil. They are on here. Dave McRae is our Freddy Krueger. Uh, Dave, fantastic job. Thank you so much for coming by. Really hoping that the rest of you guys enjoy this film as well. So according to Rex, we've got to get started. Let us watch Dylan's new nightmare together. Here we go. I've seen this so many times already and I'm still shaking. And the breathing in the beginning and like the cinematography is just that like shadow of Freddy just coming over, you know? That's such a great little like new nightmare opening. Hey, back off, Crowley. I'm here to put you to rest for good. <laughs> Who even likes this shit now? Certainly not Adam. He's just cashing checks at this point. Yeah. Sure. There he is. Thanks for coming in, Frankie. We'll be in touch. Uh, it's uh, Franklin, actually. Yeah, whatever. Dude, Nico is so good in this movie. You're up next. Oh, hey, I love that transition. My name's Dylan Porter. I'm repped by the Risher Agency. Uh, hold on. The okay. Risher? Sarah Risher? The casting? Of yeah, the nightmare film, Sarah Risher, that Risher, Hello. great nod. Uh, my name's Dylan Porter. I'm repped by the Risher Agency, and I'm reading for Michael. Dylan Porter. Dylan Porter. Dylan Porter. Ron Sloan. How, how do I know that 13. name? Do I know you, Dylan? I don't think so. 
Now, come on, tell me, tell me how. I, I couldn't tell you. Oh, wait, Porter. Wait. Are you related to Chase Porter? Yeah, that was my dad. Oh, man. Your dad and I worked back together on Chainsaw 3. Well, you were just like a little dude back then. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's that's wild. Yeah. It's a nice um, little callback to like the I, last I time that we saw me go in this. Unfortunately. This shot yeah, like sorry. universe. He you was know, a little dude. He he really was one of the good ones. Yeah. I'm fortunate what happened to him. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. That's right, you're Heather Lincoln Camp's kid too, aren't you? Yeah, um, yeah, I'd, I'd really rather not talk about all that, if, if that's okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, well, um, let's get on with the scene. And when you're ready, uh, just, just give Justin a nod. Sure. Interior Rundown Shed, Honey Island Swamp, Night. All three survivors, Andrew, Rose, and Michael, are all regrouping after Victor Crowley's last attack. We can't keep this up. Do you both hear me? We can't keep doing this. We run, we hide, Crowley oh finds God, us, so Crowley kills someone. I mean, that's the sick joke of this whole situation. We're trapped in a swamp full of hiding places, but there so is natural. nowhere to hide. Not from him. <laughs> Not even walls keep him out. So what's your point? My point, Rose, is if we can't hide, why are we still trying? We can't just wait around for that freak like you two did. That's what got my sister killed. I can tell you one thing for sure. Look at that lighting. If she were here with the us lighting now, is so good in this whole thing. She'd agree with me. He was pushed into a jet engine and he still came back. He's cursed to come back every day like new, remember? Yeah. Yeah, well, if there's a curse, there's a way to break it. Otherwise, he kills, he dies, he just keeps coming back. More people die. Good people. Like Heather. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. Even if I have to do this by myself, it's really good. I'm killing that murderer for good. The moment at the very end, if you've watched this already, that uh, moment is like. Is so, that okay? So good. I can try something different if you want me to. Oh, I think we've all seen. Yeah. Rhonda's such a good job embodying Freddy in this. I just love the splatters of blood on both sides. Dilla, look what's become of you. <laughs> It's such a Freddy thing to do. I know that voice. Look at that transition with the lighting and the slow-mo with the papers falling. All of that crap. It's not crap, by the way. It's just really good. You're dead. We killed you. The light in the background. We killed you once and for all. Once and for a time, maybe. But never once and for all. Face it, Dylan. You may be all grown up. But you're still my little bitch. It's a fucking dream. 
You're not real, and I need to wake up. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! That little ha 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 ha. Spot on, Freddy. Hey, Dylan. Oh, this is, this is cool. Where'd he go? <laughs> that's... That's... Top notch. <laughs> Little piggy. We never got to play our favorite game. Skin the cat! That transition. I love the spin of the camera into another scene, into waking up. That works so well. I know the leather pants. Where does Freddy's butt was getting too sweaty? <laughs> okay. For the ladies and gents and the theys, Buff Miko. I love that they put that on the the desk. That photo of Heather and Miko behind the scenes. And if you can't, you could see it a little bit there. Um, claw marks on his shirt. Dylan? Dylan. Sorry, Doc, what was that? I was asking how you hurt yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it was a cabinet that was stuck. I just. Give myself a shiner. I see. Dylan, what's really bothering you? <laughs> Had a nightmare last night. Hmm. Tell me about it. It was another audition dream. Well, plenty of working actors have those. It's hardly anything to worry or be embarrassed about. Two people died this time. Audition dreams. They must feel like mm -hmm. having a test. Two people died. I'm imagining. Huh? I'm not gonna play with you. So the, the two people next to the casting director committed suicide. Uh, one shot himself and the other slit in her own throat. Why do you think they did that? It was a dream. I don't know. Why does anything happen in a dream? Dreams can mean a multitude of different things, almost all of which can be applied as some kind of lesson to the person who psychologically created them in the first place. Curious if there is some deeper meaning here. Taka, am I supposed to wear a splash guard to my Why next each audition? person on the side killed themselves? Using humor you know, to cope from a psychological with angle. scary situations is an old school tactic, Dylan but not one proven to be very effective. Maybe that's why I'm an actor, not a comedian. Did the subject of your parents come up? Um, I believe yeah, Cecil said her pen clicking is like- The recognized me. Like anxiety kid. kind of thing for um, her? He was, he was yeah, asking about my dad. Some people fidget and do different things. Hmm. And your mother? Did he ask about her too? Yeah, yeah, her too. Have you checked in on her lately? Who? Your mother. Why? The answer's always the same. She's not well enough to come to the phone. Same old loony, Ben. Different day. Why well, try? Yeah, that pen was really getting under my skin. You know, maybe your casting yeah, director nice. brought her up because you are feeling guilty about not checking in. Maybe. Trust me, Dylan, I understand your hesitation to check in on her. 
especially when there doesn't ever seem to be any positive progress. But that same hesitation can feed your subconscious guilt like a sleeping giant. That guilt can slowly build up over time and eventually, in most cases, come exploding out at the most I have moment. a reasoning for very what's going on with Heather, her to according to Cecil. See I'll share after this is done. Act as sort of a pressure release valve for your guilt. That way, even though you may continue to get the answer you're not looking for, at least you tried. Yeah, maybe that's true. The pen clicking makes me just want to like swat it out of her hand. Director. Just like gets under your what skin you so much. Well, you said the like other nails two on a people died, but what happened to the casting director? Did they kill themselves also? <laughs> Yeah, she is in Friday 6. He, uh, laughed at me. That's it? Yeah. Are you sure? If so, this is the place to discuss it. I forget her name, though. Sorry. Dylan, are you sure there was nobody else in your dream? I said no. He, uh, he laughed at me, and, uh... Dylan's not being truthful. I left, you know? Dylan, we've been working professionally together for a number of years. Having learned your history over that time, I, I can't imagine what you went through when your mother started getting confused. It had a lot to do with her horror films, from what I understood from her doctor. Love that little. When we started this journey, you mentioned that you had been exposed to those films at a young age as well. I just want to be sure Thank that you, you're having these dreams is not symptomatic of a resurgence of your childhood trauma. Well, they're not. Miko's trying so hard. Rest? I mean, not Miko. Dylan's trying so hard to it's just... manageable, Doc. Keep her off his back control. without telling the truth because he doesn't want All to right, end up. Well, I'm gonna have to trust you like on his that, mother. Dylan. But please, promise me that if anything changes, if your life starts to be affected, you'll call me and come back and I'll prescribe something. I'm not going to be Dylan. No, I'm, I, I think I'm okay. Unfortunately, our time is up. Yeah. We're going to have to pick this up next session. But let me suggest in the future that you don't wait until the end of the session to bring up something that could have tremendous implications for your mental health. Yeah. No, that that's fair. Uh, you got it. Nightmares first next time. Kevin, he is very, very nice. Can verify. This is the mashup of Nancy and the Nightmares between Running from This Nightmare and Dream Warriors by Dawkins. You can see the music video to this on the Horror Show channel as well. The mashup I wouldn't have expected. But it works.
Springwood is the name of the show that I would love to create. Hey, uh, my name is Dylan Porter. I was calling it hoping to speak with my mother, Heather, if she's available. Oh, Dylan drinks LaCroix. No, she's a patient. Oh, uh, no, um, not Heather Porter, Heather Langenkamp. Oh, 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 yes. It's very clean. I believe I've spoken to you before. Dylan has Let a nice house. Let me see if she's available to come to the phone. Can you hold? Yeah, no problem. Who decides on the music on the phones, you know, for waiting? Now that is something that I would love to hear <laughs> when, I, when I'm on hold. Freddy Krueger's laugh, Are you kidding me? If, if anything changes. Of course, Mr. Porter. I blame everything on big trucks driving by. Yeah, you too. Thanks. There's a big truck that just went by. <laughs> so stupid. I love Thank this. You, what a great transition. Getting rid of it. Black. Next scene. out of the bed, you know, that little gateway from where he was to our world. And of course the lighting's changed. I like that the glove too, you see it, it's like a mix of the normal glove and like the bony hand that you like that. Fuck you too, kid. Oh, what do we have here? It's great line delivery. And use the stream catchers. You can't catch me. Oh, I like how he flicks off that light. Testing, testing. These damn batteries aren't going out on me again, are they? These damn batteries aren't going out on me again, are they? Updating the files on Dylan Porter. Porter seems to be regressing back to the paranoid state of his childhood. When I tried to dive deeper into the subject, Dylan's guard immediately raised. 
I fear Dylan may be making a return to his childhood delusions. But can they really be taking the same form as before? That character from his mother's films? What is really concerning to me is that Dylan is around the same age as his mother when she was first hospitalized. I fear I may- This brings me back those memories of when they were like, you know, Heather said, my, a very close relative died in an institution. So it's like, it goes through the family, so everybody just keeps questioning it. Think all these delusions it's brought on by a cheap horror movie. You always gotta have somebody who's logical make some kind of jab at a horror movie. And, uh, you know, Freddy doesn't particularly care for that line. And neither do I. Damn it, I knew it. The slow rise. This homage to New Nightmare with Julie. That shot kind of also reminds me of when Denby's arm falls off in part four, you know, when she takes the cockroach and the skin just, just like that. Are you? Oh, what's the matter? Don't you recognize a cheap horror movie when you see one? Sometimes. I love that sometimes because you know he's the entity. That's my favorite line in this whole one. Freddy, sometimes. Damn. I love the sh glove sounds. They've tried. <laughs> Time's up, Doc! Yeah, Corey. Definitely had the same kind of lighting feel as that night when Heather was doing all her research. Good talk. <laughs> so now it's gonna have to find a new a new psychiatrist. <laughs> oh, how cool. Earthquake! You know, they say things just get really weird just before. Great homage, Junior Nightmare, with that. Of Freddy just, you know, coming, bursting through that, that barrier, bringing about that earthquake. I know, damn you, they've tried. God, who could that be? Who do you think it is? Miko isn't the only star returning to the new nightmare world, you know what I'm saying? Rex is back. Here comes great acting from Miko. Hello? Julie? 
Jackie, come on. You guys, I love this this ending title. This is freaking pajamas. Yes, wanting more. I love this title sequence. This music, the pajamas, the pajamas as the title sequence. I'm so upset. So upset. What did you guys think? You like it? How many flaming pumpkins do you give it? Yeah. Massive cliffhanger. Yeah, it's a very, very good fan film. Me too, Jim. I would love to see a part two, especially with that cliffhanger. Who knows what's next? Yeah, where do we go from here? I think I'm gonna keep it going in the background while I talk a little bit. Actually, there's like a little mini post credit scene thing that I'm gonna wait for. It should be coming up, but yeah. Part two, if you guys want a part two, make sure to go over to the Horror Show channels and comment. Uh, on their Dylan's new nightmare on the on the fan film comment section and let them know what you thought and if you want a part two. They did so good. I mean, Mika was so natural in this. Dave embodied Freddy so incredibly well. I know. I totally agree. This is one for the books. Mark Phillips from uh, Nightmare Gloves Unlimited. I think that's, I think that's it. But in any case, um, he created the glove, which is very cool. Five flaming, totally agree. Oh, here it comes. I love it. I love it. Yay. All right, let's see. Can I just, I think I'll just keep that going afterwards. So what did you guys, uh, yeah, let me know more of what you, you thought. I would, I would love to see a hatchet five. Also, um, Hey there, look, the voice of Heather Langenkamp, you guys, it was me. <laughs> um, uh, thank you so much for, um, Nightmares Unlimited. Thank you, Cecil. I was like, I know there's an Unlimited and a Nightmare in there, but I could not remember which order it was. Yeah, <laughs> I um, I really, I really tried to narrow it down. Jason and I put up a blanket and had me with a microphone underneath of it, giving them multiple, multiple takes, and Cecil ended up nailing it. Um, ended up picking one of them, and and he he. He he says he he thinks that I um oh thank you he says he thinks I nailed it which meant a lot to me because I've had some friends reach out and say hey you were that was you I thought that was Heather's voice and I was like oh thank God you know her voice and I was so nervous that I would just get it wrong or it would sound too young or whatnot um, so thank you so much Cecil and team for allowing me to have a role in this as I mentioned earlier. Um, there is a reason, according to Cecil, what's going on with Heather. So basically, for the last, and Cecil, if I'm not remembering this correctly, please leave it in the comments, that for the last 29 years, basically, Freddie has been tor tormenting Heather, um, being kind of in the in-between. There's a lot of uh, behind-the-scenes pictures and stuff. They're going to have a lot of these on the Blu-ray and things like that. Um, and... I, he said that, you know, Freddie has been tormenting her basically. And now that he's trying to break out back into reality and coming after Dylan, he's taken the anchor out of Heather. And that's how she comes to is that, uh, you know, and Freddie can't, you know, he's not all powerful. So he has to reallocate his energy 
toward Dylan and coming back into the real world. Yeah, I would love to have another one of these, another one of these. Thank you, Davey. I appreciate that. Danita, thank you. Thank you so much. Corey, I appreciate it. Oh, Dave, that means a lot coming from you. Thank you so, 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 so much. I really, really appreciate it. You know, well done to everybody uh, who, who worked on Dylan's New Nightmare. This has been a long time coming. Yeah, emotional. I mean, Miko, I hope from this, he gets so many more roles because you could tell from this, just how much he shines, just how natural and how great of an actor he is. And I cannot stop praising Miko enough. He's terrific. Uh, in case you can't see all of this, uh, Cecil is saying that when Freddie exploded in his new nightmare, it went into Heather and Dylan, and he's been messing with her for years, keeping her crazy enough to stay locked up, which is totally, totally very, very messed up, <laughs> but not unlike Freddie. You know, he loves to, to mess around with his victim, victims. I would love to see Heather in a sequel if this was something that was possible, just to have her back, um, have her energy back on screen and something nightmare related. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Well, that was unexpected. I uh, happened to just somehow pop out of here, but I'm back. Uh, yeah, we would love to see Heather back in any way, shape, or form. And uh, fingers crossed that we do get a sequel to this, maybe with Heather. But like I said, go over to the Horror Show channel. Go watch Dylan's New Nightmare over there. I know that this is the fourth time that I've seen it now, fifth time that I've seen it, and I will definitely be watching it again and again. Thank you guys for tuning in with me. Thank you for interacting with me. Make sure to subscribe to The Horror Show. Also, let them know that you would like to see a sequel. And uh, yeah. <laughs> More Miko and more fan films, more returns of Miko as 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 his previous characters. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what that was. But as I said, thank you guys for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Do you like these fan film watch alongs? There are tons of fan films that I haven't seen that I'd like to watch for the first time, even outside of Nightmare. There are a lot of Nightmare fan films that I haven't seen that I want to watch. And then there are a bunch of Nightmare fan films that I love that I go to again and again. And I call one of my favorites. Dylan's new Nightmare has joined these ranks. And I would like to do a watch along with those and probably will. So if there's anything that you want to see as far as me reacting to something, even if it is an independent short film, I would love to. I always like to promote new works, especially independent works. And anything nightmare related, you guys know that I'm down. Thanks for watching. This was two live streams in a span of less than 24 hours. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Fred Heads. Um, Dread, we will definitely do Don't Fall Asleep. And for those of you who don't know, that is the fan film where I am in it as Nancy. And it takes place between the events of Nightmare 1 and Nightmare 3. What happens to her? We put it together with everything we know from the comics, which are canon, according to New Line Cinema. And uh, Heather voices Nancy from Beyond the Grave. So I guess that's the closest thing that we have gotten to having Heather back as Nancy since technically real Nancy, Dream Warriors, but in Nancy form, Wes Craven's your nightmare. So check out Don't Fall Asleep as well. Go give your praise to the horror show and I will see you guys in the near future. Love you all. Watch good horror movies and whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Rex and I 